Kilroy was here. The true story behind the world's first meme. Could a simple scrawl of graffiti from the first half of the last century, occasionally seen in bathroom stalls, really qualify as a meme? Who was this Kilroy guy anyway, and why should we care if he was around or not? The truth is, this uncomplicated doodle of a bald-headed man with a longer-than-average nose peering over a wall represents more than just a passing craze. It could be said that this piece of graffiti reminds us of the spirit, determination, humor, and bravery of an entire generation. Not only that, it could also be the very first viral meme. Kilroy traveled far and wide, and this is his story. But first, let's talk about memes. When is a meme a meme? We send them to our friends and family on a regular basis, but if you had to describe what a meme is, what would you say? How surprised would you be to know the word has its origins in ancient Greek? That's right. It's the shortened version of the word mimene, which means imitated thing. It's no big surprise that the word meme comes from it too. But meme becomes part of our popular culture when evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins used the word in his 1976 book, The Selfish Gene. He said that in a cultured society, if a person has a good idea, it can live on after their deaths and they don't need to have descendants to have an influence on others. Today, a meme refers to an idea, thought, or concept which is copied and sent out to large groups over social media in the hope of going viral. We all remember Grumpy Cat, rest in peace Tadar Sauce, Success Kid, Sad Keanu Reeves, and so many more. In fact, hardly a day goes by without someone asking if you've seen the latest image plastered all over the internet. But that's now. How did it all begin with Kilroy? A meme is born. Since the dawn of time, soldiers leaving their homes to fight for God and country have experienced fear, anxiety, and loneliness. They leave knowing they may never return to all they hold dear. While waiting for a battle to begin, military graffiti has long been a tradition. It's considered a way to calm the nerves, focus on something other than what lies ahead. It may be simply carving their initials into wood or more desperate pleas and dark humor like, why me? During World War I, British soldiers read the motto written on the German soldiers' belts. It said, Gott mit uns, which means God is with us. So the British wrote on the walls of trenches, we've got mittens too. But the first bit of graffiti to capture the imagination of millions of people around the world was seen on ships, unexploded shells, trucks, buildings, bridges, you name it. In fact, at one time, it felt like the doodle appeared in the most far-flung, inaccessible places in the world. Wherever American soldiers were headed during the Second World War, the shy figure with the large nose peeping up behind a wall had been there first. His name was Kilroy, and he made his presence felt everywhere. Where has Kilroy been? Some considered Kilroy a type of super soldier who fought his way ahead of the others, cleared a path, and let everyone know he'd been there first. This easy doodle was copied and drawn time after time, reassuring troops as they entered enemy territory. During World War II, Kilroy was the most widespread inside joke around the world. American GIs would cover every imaginable surface with this simple doodle. Kilroy would appear in Japan, France, Italy, Germany, in places that you'd think were impossible to get to. But this character wasn't just a bit of harmless graffiti. He was a symbol that raised the morale of American troops around the world. Imagine the anxiety when entering enemy territory in an unfamiliar land where you don't speak the language. They would see Kilroy had been there first, and it would raise a smile and lift their spirits. When entering a town under cover of darkness, a street lamp would show a drawing on a wall letting them know Kilroy had made that journey too. Crawling out of a foxhole, they saw Kilroy had done the exact same thing. The reassurance of the cartoon made the soldiers feel less alone. Civilians spread the cartoon too. There were jokes about pregnant women turning up in hospital to give birth with the cartoon on their bellies. There's even a Kilroy at the top of the flame on the Statue of Liberty. Author Charles Panetti said that the outrageousness of the phenomenon was not so much what it said, but where it turned up, and Kilroy's turned up in some of the weirdest places. The Marco Polo Bridge in China, the underside of the Washington Bridge in New York, and behind the World War II Memorial in Washington. 
But who was the first Kilroy who started the whole thing off? The name's Kilroy, James Kilroy. We may never know Kilroy's true origins, but there's no shortage of theories. One theory is that the name came from a soldier called Francis Kilroy Jr. who was struck down with the flu in his barracks. His boredom led him to write on the walls, Kilroy will be here next week. However, many people are certain the phrase came about thanks to one James J. Kilroy, an inspector at the Four River Shipyard in Quincy, Massachusetts. According to his daughter, Margaret Kilroy Fitzgerald, during World War II, his job was to set a price on rivets that had been driven into ships while being built. This was very poorly paid work and the men were paid per rivet. After the work was finished, Kilroy would count the rivets and write down how many were driven and what their value was and leave a check mark in the area. A lot of the men complained that he was not going down to the most awkward, difficult to access parts of the ship to see how many rivets had been used. This meant they were missing out on money owed to them. Sometimes they would rub out his check marks so that the rivets could be counted twice. James Kilroy was criticized for the job he was doing and he became so cross that he started to write down not just a check mark, but the phrase Kilroy was here in a yellow wax crayon used for carpentry. These ships were built in two to three weeks and left carrying soldiers all over the world. While the soldiers were traveling, they would see this slogan in the oddest places. When they landed, they decided to take the slogan with them and a legend was born. But James Kilroy never drew the doodle. Someone else was responsible for that. According to James Kilroy's daughter, in 1946, a radio show called Spotlight on America had a contest to find out who the real Kilroy was. There were over 40 people claiming to have the answer, but the station decided that James Kilroy's story sounded the most probable of all, and he won the contest. No doubt it's a great story, but other influences may have been at play too. Misters Chad and Fu were here. During World War I, a character known as Fu appeared in Australia. He didn't have the long nose, his hands weren't always holding onto the wall, and he had a happier expression on his face, rather than cautiously peeking over the wall. But he may have inspired the later versions of Kilroy. By World War II, Fu had evolved into a more devilish or gremlin-like creature who was responsible for bad luck and things going wrong. Meanwhile in Britain, a character known as Mr. Chad, or just Chad, started popping up in public places, often with a saying pointing out the shortages due to rationing. He's thought to have been the brainchild of legendary British cartoonist George Chatterton, who used to be known as Chat, so it's not hard to see how Chat could become Chad. He was often accompanied by the words, what, no sugar, or bananas, tea, or anything else that was in short supply and often had a single hair in the shape of a question mark on his head. Now, if you think about how often the American and British soldiers came together during the war, it's not too much of a stretch to see how Chad and Kilroy came together, merged, and spread across the world. But there's another theory. Could this have been the brainchild of a top secret military scientist? The Lincoln Legend Legend has it that in 1941, at a secret military school in central England, a lecturer drew a diagram on the board to show the effects of a capacitor in a circuit. Remind you of anything? Years later, he appeared with the slogan, What? No electrons? But according to an investigation into Mr. Chad by Life magazine, they concluded this was probably the work of a bored electrical trainee in the Royal Air Force with a good sense of humor. Stalin and Kilroy. Apart from keeping up the spirits of the soldiers, Kilroy also confused the enemy. Some of Adolf Hitler's commanders noticed the graffiti and reported it to him. It is said that he ordered his agents to find out who Kilroy was, as he feared there may be a secret message to decode in the symbol. Also, you know you've made it as a meme when people start to make up stories about you. It was claimed that Kilroy's graffiti appeared in a bathroom stall at Germany's Potsdam Conference in 1946. The main people at this event were U.S. President Harry Truman, British Prime Minister Clement Attlee, and Soviet ruler Joseph Stalin. It was said that Stalin came out of the bathroom uneasy and asked his aides to find out who Kilroy was. But there's no evidence that this really happened. Kilroy in Popular Culture 
Like most great legends, Kilroy has been immortalized in a song, has made appearances on TV shows and movies all over the world, but he's also been beamed into space. NASA employee Ken Young wrote a parody of Twas the Night Before Christmas, which was transmitted to Apollo 8 on December 25, 1968. It featured the lines, When what to his wondering eye should appear, but a Burma shave sign saying Kilroy was here. He's even appeared on a stamp in New Zealand in 1997. Kilroy was a global phenomenon around the world, a familiar sight in unfamiliar lands. He started off belonging to the military, but soon captured the hearts of the public too. While today he may only be seen occasionally in some rundown bathrooms, his spirit carries on in the US military and has been spotted more recently in Iraq and Afghanistan, making him the longest running meme ever. Have you spotted Kilroy recently? Where's the weirdest place you've seen him? What is your favorite meme? Let us know in the comment section below.